G'day guys, my name's Sean Dove, a creative from Melbourne, Australia. And today I wanted to share my approach to get this really fun and organic twisting effect taking advantage of soft body dynamics inside Cinema 4D. It's a super simple technique to set up and I think it can lend itself to a heap of possibilities. All right, let's jump straight in and have a play. So this is a quick look at the sort of setup we're gonna try and have a go at creating today. You can see we've got these three strings that coil up and create this really fun tight wrap. And like I mentioned, it's a really simple one to set up, really taking advantage of dynamics. So I think let's get straight into it. All right, let's create a new scene and instantly drop in a circle spline. I'm gonna change our plane direction to XZ and increase our radius to 300 centimeters. We'll leave our intermediate points at uniform and eight should work great. Next, with our circle selected, let's come up to tags, simulation tags, and we'll add a soft body to our circle spline. We want to define the thickness of our shape. So let's come over to the collision tab, enable use, and we'll set a 10 centimeter margin. This will end up being the radius of our spline. Next in the soft body tab, let's decrease our shear and flexion, as well as the dampening for each to five. And this is going to allow our spline to have some more free movement. All right, next with our spline selected, let's go up to MoGraph and add a tracer. That'll instantly add our circle spline to the trace link. Let's make sure we connect all objects, close our spline, make the type a B spline, and I'll make our intermediate points natural with a count of 10. This will get us a nice smooth spline without that being calculated in the soft body dynamics. Next, let's drop our tracer into a sweep, and then I'll grab an end side and drop that above the tracer in our sweep. Let's pull the radius on our inside down to 10 to match our collision margin, and I'll up our sides to 10, give us something a little bit smoother. In our final output, we'll up this, but for now, this should make it run nice and quick. All right, let's grab everything we've created and hit Alt-G to group it, and this will become our dynamic string setup. Now, if I were to hit play right now, our little setup we've created would just fall and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna hit Command D to bring up our project settings. I'll come over to Dynamics, General, and we'll kill the gravity. Let's pull that down to zero. Then I'll jump into our Expert tab and up our steps per frame to 10. And this is just gonna allow it to calculate a bit more accurately. All right, great, so we've got that all sorted. We now need to set up what we're gonna to use to create the twist. So let's grab a cylinder and I'll reduce our radius to 20, while at the same time bumping our height up to 1000 centimeters. Next, because we're gonna be using this with, with dynamics, let's add a few more height segments. Around 100 should work great. I'm gonna jump into our top-down view and reposition our cylinder so it's nice and close to the left-hand side of our little setup there, making sure not to intersect it. I'll then duplicate our cylinder and do the exact same thing on our right hand side. Let's jump back into our perspective view. And I'm just gonna reframe our dynamic string setup here. Just rotating around, I'll drop a camera into our scene, look through that, and then just zero out any rotation, as well as zero out our position on X. Great, we're looking straight down the barrel at everything. Perfect. Now to make this easier for us, let's rename our cylinders. This top one we created is our cylinder right. And the other one, of course, will be the cylinder left. Let's select both of these, come up to tags, simulation, and we'll add a collider body to both of them. Great, so we've got all our dynamics set up. If I hit play right now, everything stays exactly where it is. That's what we're after, perfect. Before we start, let's add a few more frames to our timeline, around 400 should work nicely. Then I'm gonna grab the cylinder on our right. We're gonna be using this to generate the twist. So hitting R to bring up our rotate tool, you can see just by giving this a little bit of a twist, we, we're gonna be animating it on the pitch direction. I'll add a keyframe at frame zero at 0%. Zero then I'm gonna come forward around 300 frames in our timeline and do 360 times five, and that'll give us a value of 1800. And just as I scrub now, you can see that that cylinder is rotating and it's grabbing our dynamic string setup. 
I'll hit play and you can see exactly what's happening here. Now it's all getting a little bit wild. We want to be able to control it a bit more. So to stop it flinging around so much, let's rewind back to zero. And then I'm going to come up to our forces and add a friction force. Come over to the object tab. And let's double the strength of this. Let's make it 20. And what this should do is drain a lot of that energy from that animation. And already you can see this is having a huge effect on that final result. Great, so we've got one twisting up. Let's rewind this back to zero. And our little dynamic string setup, let's duplicate this two more times. Let's create three strings to wrap around this whole setup. Grabbing our first one, I'll lift that 50 centimeters up in the air and doing the same with our other one, but let's pull it beneath. Let's go 50 centimeters down. Hitting play again, you can see that that dynamic cylinder on the right starts to wrap up our three dynamic setups. And because we had them all housed in a null, each tracer is referencing the correct dynamic circle. So already this is working really nicely for us. So this is the basis of the idea. You get this really fun twist just by using that dynamic cylinder. But right at the beginning, we're a little bit static. We've just got these three perfect circles. So we wanna break that up a little bit. We want it to feel a little bit more organic. So let's duplicate our cylinder on the right, the one that we've been animating. I'll come over to our coordinates, hitting Command Shift on our little stopwatch, that'll remove any of that keyframe animation, making sure to do it at frame zero so it's exactly where we want it. We'll rename this one. This is gonna be our cylinder right static. Then let's come over to our animated cylinder into the Dynamics tab and just disable that for now. We'll even hide it from our scene. Next, let's come up to Dynamics. Let's come up to Dynamics and add a force. What this force is gonna do is have our three dynamic setups attracted to each other. So let's increase our strength to 50 and then I'll hit play and you can see, you can see our three strings are really attracted to each other and start to knot up right at the beginning there. Great, I'm gonna pause it there. Let's say we're happy with the position they've landed here. Let's curl down our dynamic string setups, selecting all of our soft body tabs and setting the initial state. This is where we want it to start. We can then disable our force, disable the dynamics on our static cylinder and re-enable the dynamics on our animated cylinder. And now by setting that initial state, we already get a little bit of movement at the beginning before it starts to get wrapped up by that cylinder. Right, this is working, this is working really well. And of course now we can hide our three cylinders so we can't see them in our scene, but the dynamics are still gonna take effect. And we can see it, we almost get this illusion of the three strings just wrapping around themselves independently. Nice, so that's worked well. Let's grab our three end sides and up our sides to 20, just to smooth this out a little bit. Hitting MB, you can see our polygons. We've got a much denser mesh, but it's a lot smoother. Next, let's grab our three sweeps, right click on them, and let's bake that down as an Alembic file. And this is gonna store both the geometry and the animation that we've already set. All right, once that's done, let's grab them and we'll pull them outside of that hierarchy. Hitting Alt G to group them up. This is our baked animation. Let's hide our initial three setups. And now with this baked animation, you can see I scrubbed through the timeline and all that animation data has now been stored in those three Olympic files. And of course we can rotate this around now and position it wherever we'd like. Just scrubbing through, let's rotate this around a little bit more. And this is working really nicely. This is exactly what we're after. You get a little bit of that movement at the beginning before it starts to wrap up. And that's working really nicely. And of course, from here, we can texture those three setups separately. So let's just create a new material here. Give it a bit of a blue color. And we'll throw that onto our initial sweep. On our next one, let's maybe make it a bit of a darker blue. Right, we'll throw that onto our second sweep. And our third, let's make this a bit of a yellow color. These colors tend to work quite nicely with each other and we'll throw that onto our third sweep. 
great. We've now got these three textured separately and they're all wrapping up and that's working really nicely. So like I mentioned, pretty simple setup, but you can get some really fun organic movement. And I think, and I think you could really push this to get some really fun results. So that was the basis of the idea, using those dynamic objects to influence the soft body dynamics to get this really fun and organic twisting. All right, hope that was a bit of fun. Hope there was something you could take away from it. If you create anything, make sure you share it with us. I'd certainly love to see it. All right, thanks again, guys. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.